Good morning. My name is Mark and I'm going to be leading the devotional this morning. Um, I'm going to be reading from Hebrews 7 verses 11 to 22 and this is from the NIV version and the passage is entitled Jesus like Melchizedek. Sorry I've got a runny nose I'm gonna to have to blow it. <sighs> So, if perfection could be attained through the Levitical priesthood, and indeed the law given to the people established that priesthood, why was there still need for another priest to come? One in the order of Mechizeldek, not in the order of Aaron. For when the priesthood is changed, the law must be changed also. He of whom these things are said belonged to a different tribe. And no one from that tribe has ever served at the altar. For it's clear that our Lord descended from Judah. And in regard to that tribe, Moses said nothing about priests. And what we have said is even more clear if another priest like Melchizedek appears. One who has become a priest, not on the basis of regulation as to his ancestry, but on the basis of the power of an indestructible life. For it is declared, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. The former regulation is set aside because it was weak and useless. For the law made nothing perfect and a better hope is introduced by which we can draw near to God. And it is not without an oath. Others became priests without any oath. But he came, became a priest with an oath when God said to him, the Lord has sworn and he will not change his mind. You were a priest forever. Because of this oath, Jesus has become a guarantor of a better covenant. Wow. Now, I found this quite sort of difficult to, to fully comprehend. There's an awful lot in there and there's an awful lot of things that are referred to. And I really had to refer back to the passage yesterday to get somewhat of an understanding as to what was being described there, because there was clearly a reference to, to various things. So one of the points that was made there is, is about being greater than the Levitical priesthood. Now, this is especially difficult to comprehend as Levi had not even been born at the time of the encounter between Abraham and Melchizedek, who then was the, the king of Salem, who Abraham encountered. Um, so Melchizedek was the king of Salem and also a priest of uh, the God Most High, noting that Melchizedek is greater than Abraham, Levi and his descendants. And this is sort of somewhat implicit and this is the bit that's that's difficult to get your head around because at that time Abraham paid a tithe to Melchizedek from the treasure and loot that, that he'd acquired and because Levi was an offspring of Abraham there's some Im implicit nature that that Levi his descendants the Levites were somehow subordinate to Melchizedek who at that time Abraham had been playing the tires to. So that's the bit that I found really quite difficult in that passage to sort of get my head around about the notion of greater and greater than the Levitical priest, etc. So yeah, it's it's a bit sort of confusing and yeah, it took me quite a while to, to, to really figure out. So I'm just trying to describe that and hopefully others will understand what I've said from that. So the nature of the blessing here is the promise that God will bestow greater things upon Abraham and his offspring and that goes back to the various promises that God gave to Abraham about creating a great nation greater than the stars in the sky etc etc so this is sort of a notion of uh, the sort of blessing that's coming from this um, so another important aspect here is that Melchizedek being greater and hence above the law because the law comes from the priesthood and this is where Jesus, as king of righteousness, has therefore greater power to be able to overcome the law. 
And if we look at the uh, when the law was actually given in Moses's time, it was actually at the time the Levitical priesthood actually came into being. So there was obviously something that needed to be um, supreme of that, which is where uh, Melchizedek actually is, because, as I said, you've got Abraham and the Levites and the de their descendants that are subordinate to this. So that's the that's the nature of where this uh, nature of a, 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 pr a priest in the in the line of Melchizedek is important to overcome the law. So in Psalm 110 verse 4, there's this declaration of the Messiah belonging to a different order of priesthoods. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. This oath is a promise from God concerning Jesus and that lineage as a priest of uh, Melchizedek and not of the Levitical order of priests, which is where it's talking about the 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 the, the change in priesthood so change in priesthood you should anticipate some change in the status of law indeed jesus promised that he would overcome the law by being a living sacrifice for us and fulfilling the law forever now verse 19 is is very important and the key message is that something that i want us to take away and we should Try and remember this and remind ourselves about it and continually to try and remind ourselves of it the law made nothing perfect now the value of the law is to show the perfect standard that god wishes us to attain and mankind to attain however the law in itself is weak and unprofitable when it comes to saving our souls and giving us power over our sin we need jesus for that there are people who can be quite legalistic in their approach to the way they live their lives and seem in vain to try and fulfill the law themselves, even although Jesus has already overcome the law. And so, again, you know, I really want us to remember that, that as verse nine says, the law made nothing perfect. The law in itself could not make us perfect. Our only hope, and one might say our only true hope, is in Christ and what he has done. He is the king of righteousness, echoing both his kingly and priestly function as being in the line of Melchizedek. God has promised forever that he will not change his mind, creating a new covenant between himself and mankind, restoring the relationship which existed in the Garden of Eden. And that's really all I wanted to say. Um, I found the passage quite difficult, but hopefully I've made sense of it for people. And I say really take away the, the verse 19, which basically says that the law has made nothing perfect. The law in itself is only there to indicate what God's standard is and cannot really give us any source of overcoming sin or saving our souls. We need Jesus for that. Thank you very much.